back on Ice Time TV and I'm with Devils coach Neil Francis and Neil Mega Monday Todd Kelman finally got it out the way and uh, everyone seems delighted with the uh, four signings announced tonight three returners one uh, one bit of new blood as well for everyone what can you tell us about our new backup goaltender um, backup goal he's current GB number three goalie which is you know that's a massive achievement um, I'll touch on Mike Will for a second that uh, he did an absolutely tremendous job for us um, and he will go on and do other things which I'm sure will be revealed you know, in the coming weeks. Um, but we are so happy to have Murdy coming in. Um, Bouncy knows him really well. They grew up and were pretty much neck and neck uh, in terms of ability and you know, the, the promising goalies all the way through their junior careers. I think they played on all the young national teams together. Um, and it's, uh, you know, it's exciting for us to have him coming in. He's a guy that's played in the Elite League before. He's been in with Coventry. He's gone to, to Telford and uh, you know, played in the EPL uh, as a number one there. And you know, done great things. Won the league with Telford uh, the previous year, and now he wants to really take another step up a level. And he sees coming to us as such a professional organisation with all the backup. And you've seen the improvement in Ben Bounds over the last couple of years. And you know, he wants a piece of it. And uh, you know, that's only a good thing for the Cardiff Devils. And we look at the uh, three returning uh, players. How important is it now that this uh, team has a sense of club? about it with the continuation year on year guys wanting to come back you wanting to keep guys it, sen it seems like this club is, is much more of a club rather than a revolving door policy we saw back in the past yeah definitely I mean the, the three guys the three new, uh, returning guys announced tonight are like the glue guys aren't they <laughs> you know they're, they're every successful team needs those glue guys that are going to come in work so hard and are consistent all the time and you know guys like Zach Avato, Chris Culligan do that Pigsy, the you know the role that he plays is a very unforgiving one, and he does it perfectly. And you know he gives us that depth, so um, you know so we we got that freshness throughout the season. And uh, yeah, I mean it, it's great to see so many returnees. You know, there will probably be a couple more. I'm not going into too much detail, but the great <laughs> news is that you know when we do the exit interviews, um, guys are talking to us about you know coming back for next year and. It's it's more you know, it makes it tough on us because it's our choice then whether or not to bring back guys and there's some hard conversations to be had hard decisions to be made but we've always got to raise the bar for the Cardiff Devils because the rest of the league is doing it and we don't want to get left behind so we do have some tough decisions to make um, not all those have been made yet um, but as well as it's been really slow this year in terms of the new player market I think there was a lot more signings earlier on in the the summer last year uh, it's been a lot slower this year. And you know, we were just saying off camera, it's almost like the dam is waiting to <laughs> burst. And, and once that, that goes, I think it will be signing after signing for all teams across the league, including ourselves. we got uh, Chris Culligan coming back in, in Devil's Colours. Now, I'm not going to ask you the awkward question of whether he's going to play as forward or defence. But have you made your mind up as a coaching staff which how you see Culligan fit into that team early on? Oh, we think so. <laughs> uh, um, the, the fantastic thing about Chris Culligan is he plays equally as well forward or defence. Um, it gives us the flexibility really that on our recruitment, if we were going down one direction and all of a sudden a top, top guy jumps up in the other position, then we have got that adaptability to um, to use Kelly in, in whatever um, position you know is, is fitting and he's more than willing to do either. You know, he just wants to play, he gives his heart and soul every night and uh, Having guys like that on the team is so massively important. You can't understate it. We uh, it was asked tonight about four lines, and I think it's probably going to be a question that's asked right up until the beginning of August. Um, when is that decision likely to be made? Is that going to be something that's going to be late on, or is it going to purely depend on whether your one A guys, as uh, Laura call them, come through? Yeah, I mean the one thing about four lines that I think sometimes get overlooked is you, you look Nottingham last year. They signed four lines to begin with. Um, in fact, I think four lines in a spare with Betridge, <laughs> but they probably only played four lines for twenty percent of the season. It just so happens that the twenty percent of the season when they got everybody fit and healthy and rolled four lines were right at the back end of the season, <laughs> and they steamrolled us up in Nottingham just for the Challenge Cup final. They dominated us in that Challenge Cup final, if we're honest. And Bouncy stood in his head and kept us in the game. And it came through very nicely for them at the end, and that's given a lot of focus to four lines. That being said, um, we can't afford to slip up at the end of the season like we did. And if that means that four lines at periodic points during the year, because you'll never run 
in this country four lines throughout the season because you're always going to have injuries and suspensions. So it, it's all right in a, in a system where you've got call-ups, like you know the NHL can call up from the AHL, AHL can call up from the East Coast, and it happens in Europe with uh, affiliated teams. Um, unless you have that, which we don't have in the Elite League, you're not going to run four lines throughout the season. You know what we are looking at is the depth that that gives us. So when we can, you know, we got when we got 12 healthy forwards, we run four lines, and when there's not, then you've still got a good solid nine plus some spares to, to sit in. So um, it's it's really it is personnel driven because you've got to have the the right guys to fill those four lines rather than just you know waste a, a roster spot there. So um, keeping cards close to our chest a little bit. Um, it's you know, it's definitely a strong consideration, um, something that we'd like to do. The personnel has got to be right. And I'll uh, I'll leave the question. Uh, this question till last, as I'm sure it's one everyone really wants to know. Mark Richardson's testimonial. Is Neil Francis getting the skates back on? It's a ticket seller. Oh, I haven't had the email yet, <laughs> so I don't know. I think Richie knows I probably haven't been on the ice in a while. So <laughs> I got a few months leading up to it, and. Uh, I don't know, I still bet I'm quicker than Brad Voss. So uh, <laughs> if he's coming back for it and he's lacing them up, then um, I'm up for that race. <laughs> Neil, thank you very much and uh, enjoy the rest of your off-season. I'm sure it's going to be uh, as exciting and stressful as it has been so far. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thanks a lot. Thanks.